guys welcome back and uh, excited to be back with you once again today we're going to go over another Gilbert family song uh, one that I play with the Gilbert family out of Sparta Tennessee there are plenty of videos here on my YouTube channel that I've done uh, about the songs that I play with them and you can also check them out by going to www.thegilbert or let's see dot yeah thegilbertfam.com uh, shows the different schedules and things where we where we uh, be playing different churches and things like that. But this is a song that uh, Brother John Gilbert, the bass player, sings on. He's got many of them he sings on, and uh, this is one of them that uh, um, I learned from the CD that they had created. And I learned the uh, solo and the intro. This is more of an intro and solo. It's kind of the same thing, but I just do a little something different on the solo. Uh, well, it's more of a turnaround. Uh, it's kind of a half a solo or whatever. But I do a little something different for a little more of a bluegrassy sound and so that it won't be uh, too boring and monotonous by repeating uh, some of the same stuff I did. So this is the, the intro, and it kinda, it, that's what I just did was the intro, and it sounds like this. Okay, so first of all, what I'm thinking of is this the D um, scale. Okay, and that is all that is. You got a half or a whole step. Uh, now, once again, just to let you know, he does this in D sharp. So we have capo on the first fret. All right. So let's pretend that the capo was not there. This is now the first fret, second fret, third fret, etc. Okay. So we're going to go to the uh, pinky is going to be for this shape. We're going to think of the pinky on the uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth fret. That's right past the dot. And we're going to come down to the let's see, fifth fret, third fret, second fret. Remember, as if the capo wasn't here. So that's a whole step, then a half step, and the same thing for the B string. And then we're going to come right down with our ring finger that is in position on the fourth fret. Back to the second fret, okay, and then open. And then if we do the same shape on the D, uh, D string, same positions on the frets. Okay, so we're going to use that shape, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off on the um, second fret of the G string here. I'm just going to walk that up. It's all alternate picking. Start with the down stroke. Okay, so if you can just get that much, you'll be doing all right. Okay, after that, that's once again down strokes or alternate picking. Down, up, down, up. That's an upstroke. It'll feel weird because it's inside the string, but that's got to be an upstroke, okay? And I always add a little vibrato there. And I usually don't have time to add a vibrato there, but uh, that's since this was an upstroke, you're going to start with a downstroke. So we have this kind of um, repetitive uh, sound. And so far we have and then I just do a really quick lick. Okay, let's try it again. That's all hammers. Let's down, up, down, up, down on the E string. Down on the B, up, down on the E. Okay. backtrack if you don't know what backtracking is I'll talk about that on my bluegrass guitar essentials um, course as well as there are uh, one or two videos here on YouTube if you type in backtrack or backtracking you'll see what that all that's all about 
So, down up on the E, back on this uh, pinky note here, we were on the B string, 5th fret, back on that E, on the upstroke. If I do it in terms of frets, this is the B string. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, five, four, five, three, two, five. Okay, now that's the end of the lick. And then we just do another little phrase here. And I'm holding this now. In my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course and here on YouTube, several different places, I mentioned this other alternate D shape. Okay, it's an inversion. We're going to put the one, two, three, the third in the bass, and we have this shape. Okay, this sound. This is an inverted uh, D shape. You definitely want to learn this if you want to learn some lead bluegrass picking. Uh, Tony Rice uses this a lot in his picking. It's really handy when you go up uh, the different uh, fret, uh, the fretboard and the different shapes because it allows that pinky to get out here and you can have this little shape that you, you know, are familiar with hopefully by now. Okay, And it's just a lot easier to hit this note with a ring finger as opposed to keeping this shape and getting that pinky out there or out here. These, these uh, other fingers kind of limit what your finger can do here whereas if you're doing this and you can actually stretch that pinky out a lot bit a lot better. So um, the shape is fourth fret, second fret, uh, fourth fret D, second fret G, third fret B. And you're gonna do ring first pinky. I mean um, ring first middle. And usually I play this is a suspended sound, but I usually play D suspended anyway. So I don't never bar this. You can, but I don't ever do that. I like to have. Uh, my fingers um, available to to move around if I need to and not be hindered by um, obstructed by that bar shape there so here's what we got so far and that's where the first it, it, you're gonna land with your middle finger here anyway so your first finger can come back up from that B string where it was kind of and then it comes up Double stop that B and the G strings. Pinky's gonna come down on the fifth fret again and they're suspended. Okay, so it lands us on that D shape anyway. We're holding everything down to help sustain these notes. And then I'm gonna do reach up with the first finger and go. And that's an open a G string that you're hearing ringing out there. Sometimes I leave the first finger down. Now I have to bring the first finger up to, to hammer on it. Then I come back down if I need to. Or you can do it open. I like the open sound better. Uh, but after you do the... Okay, so that's uh, second, fourth on the D string. Hammer on, up on the G. That was a down, by the way. Down, up, then down. Pull off where you just came from. And usually this is another down on the uh, A string, 4th fret, because you want the last note to be a down stroke, so that's got to be an up to, for you to hit the attack on that down stroke, okay? see this in action you can like I said look up uh, the videos of the Gilbert family that I have playing some of these songs with them now that's the intro okay once again I'm gonna do this one more time and if you have any problems slow the video down if you're watching this on YouTube online uh, on on a laptop or computer you have this ability to do this so far as far as I know they don't have this ability on the mobile app or the Xbox app and that is to adjust the speed the variable speed Okay, so slow this down to about 0.5 and you'll be able to, to play it and watch it as in a, a slower time. And the other thing is you can do is, what I want you to do is watch my picking hand, okay? So I'm going to play this at a medium, kind of slow tempo. Watch the picking hand. It's just as important 
as what this hand is doing. Sometimes even more, especially if you want to get your speed up and your coordination, okay? So let's try that. because I messed up a couple times a little faster okay all right so that's the intro um, the next part of that is going to be the solo slash turnaround all right and that is going to be, the first half is going to be the exact same, all right? So pardon my eye care here, I'm having to deal with, once again, what possibly may be pink eye, I don't know, but we'll try to get past that. The second, uh, so for um, the first part of that solo slash turnaround, same amount of time, and it's going to sound a little different. It's going to, this much of it's going to be the same. Then I'm going to add a little extension. So instead of, I'm going to add a little extension with my pinky on the E string. Okay, so you know the, up, up to that point. So I'm not going to go over there again. So we're just going to start from here. Once again, watch that picking hand. Instead of, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to uh, be going. Okay, so we're going to kind of shift that up a little hammer on. That's a down, up on the B, pull off. Okay, and then here's where it gets a little bluesy. There's that suspended note we did earlier. But now we're going to add a little bit more of a Tony Rice-esque lick here okay so once again we have these two fingers not these two for the d keep these here um, and then we're going to go and i'm not doing double stops this time i'm just doing one at a time and you might want to just leave this finger here because it's coming right back to it and then here's the hard part and that that is barring At that point, you can lift the middle finger because you don't really need it on the B string anymore. Okay, so you need it for here. But after that, when you come down, as soon as you land that, you can lift off that ring finger or middle finger off the B string so you can work on that bar. And I call this something else on my bluegrass guitar essentials, and it wasn't backtracking, it was double backing or something like that. A double back lick. I first learned this from Eric Clapton and uh, heard it a lot, Tony Ross doing it a lot. So, and that is just barring, hitting a note, barring, hitting a note again, hitting a note below that higher note. And so we're gonna land on that fifth fret. Remember again with the capo, this is one, two, three, four, even though that's the dot, is the actual fifth fret. We're gonna come up to the imaginary fifth fret. Uh, fifth fret with that pinky. And that's a downstroke on the D. Up on the G, bar that at the fifth fret. Lift off the bar, come back down to that D. First finger stays on that G, that's very important, right at the second fret. It stay there the whole time. And then uh, the middle finger is right in position to go on that third fret D string. Slide up, and then open on the D, that's a down. Up, down to the third fret, A, pull off, open D. Watch the picking hand.
if you do a wrist stroke, you can just maybe really get down on it a little bit more. So let me try that a little bit more up to speed. too fast to even think about that happening. Now one thing you'll find happening a lot and it does to me is that the bar usually I don't really play this one as cleanly as I'd like to so that might be something you want to work at. So hear that? And usually what happens is this the string the G string gets caught on that pinky so you really have to get a good arch in that pinky so that you won't get you really gotta work on that arch. Now usually, here's something I do to try to avoid that. Is when I come up on the G lift off that D. Now you can't really hear it since it's in D anyway. It's in D anyway so it's not really going to affect the overall sound of the, um, the solo. You're not going to hear it with other stuff playing in the background. So definitely work on that. That's a good workout for your pinky uh, muscle there. You're going to be using it here, here, uh, and on the D string especially. And that's that's a good workout because you're having to go up the, up the neck a little bit and on a heavier gauge string, okay? I'm gonna try it again all the way uh, from the intro, and then we're gonna do it again with the um, solo slash turnaround and see what that sounds like. <laughs> Too, because you're really when you do a vibrato, it really pulls on that pinky muscle. Okay, so that was wading through deep waters, the solo or the intro and the solo slash turnaround. Hope you guys get a lot out of that. Um, that's a good practice song to do in D. We do a lot. To, Typically in bluegrass, we tend to focus on G a lot. And really, you, you need to be practicing in multiple keys. And I do a few songs in D on bluegrassguitaressentials.com. Uh, Once again, you can go there and add the little forward slash DVDs at the end of that to check out the DVDs as well as the webisodes versions. So that's a DVD, physical package, seven discs, or uh, the downloadable webisodes, which will soon be switching to Udemy, um, completely over switching over. Uh, once I get them all uploaded, but uh, you can check those out, and um, I'm really enjoying putting together some more some newer videos for you guys. And hopefully, uh, hopefully I can do some more Gilbert family songs. I think right now I'm going to call it a night. Go in the go ahead and give my eyes a rest. It's almost one o'clock, but uh, that's all right. I've got three or four videos, four or five videos done today. My battery's about dead, and so I'm just going to go ahead and get these. Uh, probably, well, I'll copy them over probably tomorrow morning. And uh, just hit the hit the sack for tonight, but uh, it's been fun. What what better way to spend the the late night hours than playing guitar and enjoying uh, teaching you guys some of the stuff that I've learned? So check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com. We'll see you on the next video, whatever that may be. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Please share, like, subscribe, um, and that will really help me out um, in my customer base, my fan base, and just getting the word out about bluegrass guitar all over the world all right world domination for bluegrass guitar we'll see you guys next time thanks so much for watching god bless and keep playing some awesome flat picking bluegrass